It's a pleasure to be here. Y'all excited to see Bobby Kennedy? Y'all a little disappointed you have to watch me? Yes. All right, I, I love it. Uh, we're gonna be going around to check your proof of vaccination cards before we do, probably. Yeah. Now, I am curious, I, I always love to get a, a sense of the room. Make a little noise and show of hands. Who has seen some of my work before? It's kind of honored. Wow. Well, I'm the guy you normally watch while you're sitting on the toilet with your pants around your ankles. And for tonight, we're going to keep our pants on, if that's okay with you, Austin. You know, we like to keep it weird. You already have yours off, sir. That's great. Very progressive of you. I'll have you read a story to my kindergarten class. Now, I'll tell you, one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of Bobby, I've gotten to know him over the past four years, I look at the world and what concerns me the most is the world my son is going to live in. And I'm curious, how many of y'all have kids? I mean, to me, that's just the highest purpose in life. I look at my son, he's a divine, miraculous droplet from God. He just melts my heart. My little guy, he's getting big. He's 163 weeks old now. See, he's beautiful. You know, he's a little over three. And I've learned, you know, having a, being a father, having a toddler, it's just like having your best friend, someone who's incredibly happy all the time while also being super suicidal. He just wants to play and try to kill himself. It's like, oh, are those stairs? Face first, probably. No, I love it. I love it. To me, the cutest thing about my son being a toddler, just how clumsy he is. I'll give you an example. The other day, he's just standing next to me, and he fell over. Just thump. I was like, well, son, you could be the president one day. No? <laughs> Uh, he, he likes ice cream, he can barely talk, still poops himself. I think he's another four years, I think we're pretty good. Y'all are very sweet with that. There's some crowds I do that to and I, I pick out people in the audience. They're super entertaining to watch. Your reaction just kind of like, I don't like what you were saying. <laughs> They're always doing that as a vaccine side effect kind of thing. And then, <laughs> that is good. I love my little guy. In about 12 years, I'm going to throw his gender reveal party and have him tell us what he is. He doesn't talk much yet, so he hasn't told us. I don't know how else you'd find out. Yeah, I'm Y'all, it's old news at this point, but I find it uh, a little uh, corrupt when the Biden administration declined to give Bobby secret service. I think, yeah. I think it's corrupt, but I think it's a good thing. Like, do those secret service agents aren't used to someone who can move, do pull-ups. It was like, yeah, we just watch him, he, he's just right there. And we make sure he, he can't, he's, good, he's just gonna be right there. We're pretty good. Um, they're going after Trump a little bit, aren't they? Uh, GP, the guy standing next to me, I don't know like how like J6 he is, so I'm just gonna be here and not say anything. It, here's how I feel. I don't like political corruption. And, and I've even heard Bobby say he doesn't, you know, he's not the biggest fan of Trump, but doesn't like how they're going after him. You know, all these indictments, you know, they officially arrested President Trump last year. That didn't sit well with me because I care about our country. I care about my son's future in our country. So I got stressed out. But then I realized I have to accept this. I live in a country where they arrested President Trump. That's the reality. And given the fact that they arrested him, I just wish they would have filmed it for an episode of Cops. Wouldn't that be good? Like, he already lives in Florida where all episodes of Cops are filmed. 
You just imagine the film crew and all the officers sneaking up outside of Trump's trailer at mar lago Yeah. You're screaming and domestic violence inside. They finally kick the door down. There's Melania on the floor. She's crying. She's got a black eye. As she starts attacking the cops, there's white trash Trump standing there. No shirt on, jeans down to here. Then he takes off out the back door trying to get away, right? Sprinting across fairways, diving over bushes. Hijacks a golf cart, Tucker Carlson's driving, and they take off like he's got OJ in the white Bronco. But they're drunk and on mess, so they crash into the clubhouse, roll the cart. Trump takes off on foot again. He's got a lot of energy. And he almost got away. But then you cut to the post-arrest interview with the cops. Like, uh, yeah, this is what happened out there. Well, uh, perpetrator almost got away, couldn't find a spot. It's a very strong hiding spot. No one's ever seen a hiding spot like this. They'll never find me here. Hillary should be in jail. And then we looked over there and found the criminal. Got him. So not too long ago, uh, uh, President Trump, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with everyone about anything uh, or something like that. I don't agree with everyone about everything. Is that what I should say? But it, he, he said something that didn't sit well with me. He was talking about RFK. He said he has all this fake vaccine information. I was like, out of all people on earth that you accuse of saying that, you know, was, he's still proud of Operation Warp Speed. You know, they, they have warp and DNA. They're very, he's very proud of it. That joke didn't go good. I, I've never said that before. Remind me never to say this stupid joke again, Jimmy. Jeez. Yeah, uh, what was it? Y'all remember the day RFK was announcing his VP pick? I think a lot of us were just like, well, it's not Aaron Rodgers. He's a good quarterback, so he makes sense for a VP pick. You know, he's a little concussed. You want a little bit of that in a VP pick. When Bobby announced he was switching to independent a few months ago, a handful of months ago, uh, some of y'all look like you had to dye your hair back to its natural color, <laughs> which is fine. I love it. Man, uh, <laughs> who read uh, uh, Bobby's book, The Real Anthony Fauci? Well, all right, a very literate crowd. Y'all should be proud of yourselves. Dude, Fauci disappeared pretty quick after that book, didn't he? He's just like, books out. He's like, hey, guys, I'm going to retire, and I'll be over. I'll, I'm going to hide for the rest of my life. But I love watching how Bobby is so considerate. He thinks about things. You know, thousands of references in that book. And that's very good cause to be suspicious of someone like Anthony Fauci. Contrast the way I look at him, it's just like, dude, I don't trust the guy because he didn't throw that first pitch out very well. Did y'all see that a few summers ago? Can you trust a guy that throws that badly? I don't think that's right. Is, uh, is Bill Gates here tonight? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Gates gave vaccine injections as inaccurately as Fauci throws? I just imagine he's going for your arm, just gets his own jugular. But yeah, problem solved, Bill. But before I get out of here, I want to uh, just say from my heart to yours, sometimes I get concerned. And I tend to be fairly optimistic most of the time. But sometimes I get stressed out. I look at the world. I think about my son, our children. We are authoring the landscape of the world that they will be living in. They're going to choose how they navigate it. But right now, we are authoring that landscape. And sometimes I look at what we're up against, and I get forgetful. And when I get forgetful, I get bummed out, afraid, and stressed. Because I look at the corruption, what's controlled, big tech the censorship industrial complex, mainstream media, different pieces of the government. 
three-letter agencies. And I get forgetful thinking like there is nothing that we have that can stand up against that kind of power. But then I remember two things. One, we have God on our side. And I truly do believe that. And we also have Bobby Kennedy. And, and what I've realized why I love Bobby so much and why he resonates with a shockingly growing number of people, yes, he would be amazing to be in office. I think so much good would happen to that from that. But there's something even more magical happening. People are seeing what Bobby represents, and we're finding more of that in ourselves. A dedication to truth, a selflessness, a mentality that says, it is better to die on my feet than live on my knees. And, you know, chances are most of us won't have to die on our feet, but we realize a willingness to die on our feet is also the only way to truly live. And we see Bobby model that, and it just inspires me. And he, it would be my hope that he wins this election. And if that doesn't happen or there's funny business, I would also say we've already won. He has started a movement. It's been like anything we've ever seen in our lifetime, a grassroots movement where people are awakening. And I would dare say what you love about Bobby Kennedy, let's have more of that from you. I think that's one of the things that this man is here to teach us. He is not just a political candidate. I, I do believe he's working on behalf of God I think he's working on behalf of our future generations. Does that make a little bit of sense? So I'll, I'll leave you with this. From my delusional redheaded perspective, I look at beautiful awake people and I see two categories. Category number one, people who see a lot of the stuff that's going on. You know, they don't buy into the, the smoke show, the narrative. And they're stressed out, living in a state of fear, angry a lot. It's not a very good quality of life. Then there's another category of awake people that know the same things, see the same things, but they have a good quality of life. They, they're happy a lot of times, and life feels good to them. The difference that I see between those two categories, you go following category number one as a awake person using your own brain or category number two the difference I see is people taking action or not what I found is you know, my own small little contribution I, I honestly don't do anything brave I, I say words I don't even claim to know the truth I just claim to say what I think but when I see people take action one, I see an incredible contribution to the betterment of the world, and that's beautiful. But I also see that creates incredible peace inside people. Because when you take action, when you say what you think, and then you let your actions follow through on that, you have the peace of mind that change can in fact happen because you feel it on a visceral level. And that's why I say, if for some reason the election doesn't go the way we want, and I hope and pray it does, and I'll do what I can to make it go the way I want it, we want it. But if it doesn't, I say we've already won because something we've learned from Bobby Kennedy is to take action, do more of what he, where the power is shifting back to we the people. I think, I think real change in our country it has to start at the cellular level, and we are the cells in the body of humanity. We're the cells in the body of America. So if you can leave here tonight, if this makes any sense to you, I would just challenge all of us, including myself, to up-level our contributions, the small, insignificant cell that we are, which is actually incredibly magnificent. If we can align with our own critical thinking, say what we think out loud, and then our, let our actions stay in incredible alignment 
with what our heart, soul, mind, and words say, I would dare say we win. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me. It has been a pleasure. Go Team Kennedy. Good night.